Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, we're here again with Manny Pacheco, my great partner, John Coleman. And uh, what are we going to talk about today, guys? Hey, uh, Manny, I've got a topic for you. And it's the Academy uh, uh, Academy Awards. They, they, uh, that COVID thing that hit us last year. COVID? Turned everything COVID? upside what, down. And what's every, COVID? Every... Did you read COVID? Oh, the pandemic. Oh, yeah, COVID, right. <laughs> Thanks, Art. <laughs> Manny, wake him up, will you? Oh, no, I think he's wide awake. <laughs> That's the problem. <laughs> so so what, what I was thinking is that the Academy is was equally as effective. The Academy Awards, the television show, the rules of the Academy. Um, people didn't go to theaters. How, you know, they had to change the, the rules. What's going to happen? Well, the Academy uh, of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences, they, they had to make some very specific uh, changes in the way people got their hands on, uh, uh, on, on films so that they can review them, judge them, and then vote their excellence. Uh, but think how quaint it was a year ago when, when we were all debating the idea that maybe there should be more diversity in the Academy, which is a very important topic that should never be forgotten, something that was addressed for the last three to five, maybe 10 years. Uh, but this year, that seems to not be the conversation we're having, although it should be, and, and, and it will be again. This year, they're trying to figure out how to even have an award show. Because, uh, as you mentioned, uh, most movie theaters are closed. Some may never open again. And we have productions that are halted and then started up again and then halted again. And so uh, what are we going to judge? Were there films that were made before the pandemic hit? What are we going to do with those films? Uh, I mean, there were lots of questions that emerged. And the Academy has come up with something that I believe seems to work for the most part as of today. I believe things might change a little bit down the road, but for, for, for today, they are looking at ways of folks streaming the current selection or the current batch of films to be considered worthy of an Academy Award or an Oscar. Uh, so um, there you are. We're, we're, they still have to appear in a movie theater in Los Angeles or New York uh, for a week or two. And there are theaters that are opening up where a certain amount of people will be allowed in to, to view these films, and then they will shut down. But I'll tell you, the real winner in all of this were the folks who foresaw that streaming services was going to be the way to go in the way we receive content. So folks like Amazon Prime and Netflix are flourishing. I mean, they're absolutely flourishing in putting out content. Well, you know, other uh, more traditional movie studios are running around trying to establish ways of streaming their product. And uh, I foresee that uh, the big winners at the night of the Academy Awards will be product that comes out of Netflix or, or, or Amazon Prime and the like. And by the yeah. way, by the yeah. way with, with those, it's not just that uh, uh, it used to be that people would make films and you'd see you know, a production of uh, 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 Manny, John, and Art uh, uh, at, a, uh, at a film by such and such, and, a film, and then it's Warner Brothers. These are prime all the way, or Netflix all the way. They're funding them. They're original films that are done by them. And quite frankly, I expect that, uh, uh, are you sure they all have to be shown in the theater? Uh, for some period of time? Yeah, that's, that's still a rule. Yeah, they do. And okay. they're, they're going to find theaters that they will open up just for like the week and, and, and they will not fill the theaters. They'll just put a couple of people in mm -hmm. and, and that's the way it's going to work. Yeah, and that, but that's always been the rule is it's got to, if I, you can correct me if I'm wrong, no, a film right. to be eligible for an Academy Award has to play uh, for a week, only one week in a theater in LA and another week in a theater in New York, and that was it. it and listen, even back before COVID and uh, the closing of movie theaters, motion pictures would often, to be eligible for the Academy Award in whatever it was, March, they would premiere the film in December right. in a little theater in LA that nobody ever heard of, but it ran for a week, that's all that counted, and a little theater in, off, off Broadway in New York, 
and then they would be eligible for an Academy Award, but they never released the film until after the Academy Award show. So <laughs> after it got all the publicity and hopefully a lot of awards, then they'd release it to the general public and it, it would be brand new in March or April. Right. <laughs> so that's, that's really true. Yeah. And that's had to change this year. I mean, they're still releasing stuff now in December, January, but it, you know, it, when it's officially released, I guess it's going to have the stamp of 2020, uh, 2020 for sure. But but you know what? I'm not. Re I'm now starting to receive screeners, uh, links to screeners that, that are streamed uh, this week, next week, and it's going to continue on until the Academy Awards, or at least until the voting is over. And I'm seeing all sorts of uh, tremendous films uh, from the uh, comfort of my home. Uh, yeah. Some of the some of the standouts that I've seen, obviously, uh, Netflix is doing great with uh, releasing uh, uh, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom with the Viola Davis and Chadwick Boseman. Uh, Chadwick Boseman is, is, a, is a lock for a nomination for Best Supporting Actor. Uh, Mank, of course, the story of, of Herman Mankiewicz and the and the and the writing of Citizen Kane. Um, that's real popular, and uh, Gary Oldman is going to probably get a nomination for Best uh, Actor, as is Amanda Seyfried uh, as 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 Marion Davies for Best Supporting Actress. Uh, but there are others. Pieces of a Woman I just saw was fabulous, and I I cannot see how Vanessa Kirby, who we last saw in The Crown, the first couple of seasons as Princess Margaret, I think she's a lock for a Best Actress nomination for this really riveting a movie about the loss of a child during childbirth. Uh, it's the first half hour just knocks your socks off. Wow. And then there's Elizabeth Moss, uh, who was uh, Shirley Jackson, the uh, author. And the name of the movie, obviously, Shirley. And Elizabeth Moss was in truth with Kate Blanchett and uh, Robert Redford. But she is really remarkable. And I see a best female in a, a nod for her there's one other film that actually was released in late 2019 early 2020 but had to be shelved pretty darn good movie it's called working man and uh it it features uh, talia shire but the, the the lead peter garrity wow he's really good i don't see how he doesn't get a nod for best actor although he might be forgotten because it was released so early last year but working man's a really really good film so there's a, a number of films that are coming out. Ammonite uh, with uh, with Kate Winslet and and uh, um, uh, Cersei Ronan, uh, really powerful acting performances there. The Mauritanian is real good with Jodie Foster. So there's a number of great films that 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 are out there. And boy, you just wish you scream for the opportunity to have seen these on the big screen. Yes, yes, you do, and, and that's what's going to change. I think. Uh, I think it's it is a sea change, because let's face it, Netflix uh, and Amazon mm -hmm. uh, Prime, they they may have to put the film into the theater to be eligible for the Academy Awards. They have no intention of releasing it in uh, in theaters. No. It's going to be streamed to your home on Amazon yeah, or Netflix. They're driving and people to the service, sure. That's major. That's going to change the the whole. Well, it has already changed the face of. Well, and you know, and that, that includes also. I don't want to. I don't want to forget Disney. Disney's going to do oh. the same thing. And you know, this argument a year ago, it seems so quaint. And our, you know, between people like Martin Scorsese and and Steven Spielberg, where Scorsese was espousing the virtues of streaming services, where, you know, uh, Spielberg was more of a traditionalist and would have nothing to do with streaming services. I think that's. That's pretty much an argument that's been won by Scorsese. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, listen, when you're when you're locked out of uh, your job, you're locked out of uh, the stores, you're locked out of everything. You have to stay home, and the theaters are closed anyway. What do you do? Was, I mean, what, we're all now habits. Of, has somebody uh, else has said it in a different genre? The public has spoken. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, you're right, Art. Right. The public has spoke. <laughs> I, I, by, the, by the way, Manny, again, your your knowledge of of, of uh, cinema, past and present, is so broad and so deep. I just love listening to all your stuff. But I I have to I have to chime in on a film that I had high expectations for, and 
uh, to anybody else, you know, if I offend you, that's too bad. Uh, uh, Wonder Woman 1984 really sucked, <laughs> in my opinion. Okay, and I had high expectations for it. Okay, but I have well, I have to tell you that I would be surprised <laughs> if Kristen Wiig didn't get a Best Supporting Actress. She had a she was had a tremendous on screen uh, presence, totally unexpected. I think in she, Wonder Woman. Yeah, in Wonder Woman, I think she's earned uh, a supporting actress. Uh, well, you know, I have to tell you, I, I always respect individuals who will pick out a, a, a an actor in a film they don't like because the performance itself might have been good, or maybe the costuming is good, so they would nominate it for best costume. Yeah. You know, I, I I did that with a number of films uh, that I've seen in the past that I didn't like, but I still voted for the actors involved. And uh, and then they ended up winning. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, you can still pull out an actor out of a perform as a performer who does a great job in a film that you may not like. Uh, one other standout I forgot to mention from Pieces of a Woman, 88 year old Ellen Burstyn, who won an mm. Academy Award in the 1970s. She's back. Fabulous performance, really strong supporting performance in Pieces of a Woman. So I don't want to ignore Ellen Burstyn's performance because she is really, really good. And okay. so, uh, yeah, the Academy are, are arguing different things now, but it's for their survival. It's not about whether or not they can tinker with it in one way or another. This is about how we're going to get films to the public. And that right. is a fundamental question that the Academy and others must address. And, and, and they must be in partnership with the movie studios or this is not going to work. I mean, it's just it's just it's going to be a. It's going to be a very sad state of affairs if, we, if they can't figure out how to get these films to the public. Well, yeah, I, would well just, I, I would like to. I would like to end. You can you can end the end, John. But I would like to say, and the winner is the view, <laughs> the viewing public. The viewing public. <laughs> very good. I, I was just going to say, Manny, as we get closer to uh, the Academy Awards presentation night. Um, that we'll have more to discuss. We'll talk more about these films, most of which a lot of people have never seen and will not see uh, if they don't get Netflix or uh, Amazon Prime. So there's a lot to lot to discuss sure. this year about the Academy. And, and I will even I will even divulge on celebrating Act Two as I do on my blogs. Uh, I will divulge this year how I vote this year with the within the Screen Actors Awards because I am a voting member of the Screen Actors Guild. SAG-AFTRA, and uh, I always, every year for the last decade or so, I have announced who I thought were the best actors and actresses in a given film, and, and then the best ensemble. So I'm, well, I'm always prepared to do that, and I could do it on, on Celebrating Act Two as well. Well, I think that I'm as a voting as a voting member of the Directors Guild of America, I refuse to acknowledge my voting ah! for the best director. Well, as a as a voting right. member of Celebrating Act Two uh, uh, Guild. Um, I think what we ought to do is, in a separate session, record all of them, and we'll put a date on it. So everybody, well, they'll, they'll think we put it in post-production. Because if you come up with all winners, nobody's going to believe it. So, But we don't want to influence the other people who are voting, because they'll say, oh, Manny voted for these 14 people. That's it. Okay? I'm just going to check off it's the box. Yeah. We, we know that they would do that. So we'll have yeah. to figure out some way to record you, let everybody know we've done it, and that it's real when we finally show it the day after, and uh, then we can, we can compare everything. Anyway, well, I've, I've been sharing my I've been sharing my ballot for for years on, on my blog on ForgottenHollywood.com, and I intend to do the same. And so we we can we can review my blog, and that, that's a safe way of doing it because that that has a a, a date stamp on it. <laughs> okay, okay. Good. Well, uh, this <laughs> again, Manny, we just know that we're going to have a great time and no exception uh, every time that we chat with you. You're really great. Thank you. See you well, soon, Manny. Thank you so much, guys. See ya. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.